Joining us now, Councilmember Tommy Wells wants to replace Mayor Gray. Uh, Councilmember Wells, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at this headline in the Washington Post today. In D.C., a booming city shrugs off new allegations of political corruption. They quote a, uh, a resident, a voter uh, in Ward 7, who says, you know, listen, the neighborhood's better. And uh, she specifically says, poor Gray, he's kind of crooked, but here it's safer, busier, all kinds of people are moving <laughs> in. I mean, there you go, uh, Council Member Wells. What are you going to do with that? Well, the first thing is, is that, the sheer breadth and vastness of Jeffrey Thompson's, you know, illegal, you know, contributions to so many candidates in D.C. that it really just subverts the whole electoral process. And you know, the the degree to which people knew or didn't know. I mean, we've had corrupt influence in our elections for for quite a while, and it's got to stop. All right. And uh, listen, I see your advertising campaign now out there says that you are the only candidate who will really stop corruption in the district. Um, but how are you going to do that? Uh, because well, so many voters just think this is they're so cynical now. They just think ah, there's nothing that can be done. Well, as, as Ron Machen said, you know, that the whole point of campaign finance limits, you know, how much donor limits is to try to be sure that just the wealthy don't control the government. And the degree to which people subvert that through bundling donations from limited liability corporations and all the different corporations that people control and own so that they can go outside the campaign limits, whether it be legal or illegal, is subverting, really, the government that we have. And in D.C., we deserve to have an honest, clean, open, transparent government. So, you know, I'm the only one that's, you know, an elected official that's running for mayor it was not subpoenaed in this Jeffrey Thompson debacle. And, you know, he certainly never gave, or any of his associates, the only money that he gave towards any campaign towards for me was to beat me or defeat me to my opponents. And, you know, we've got to fight for good government. We're all in this together. All right. So the last time we had a decent poll on, on the state of the race, Vincent Gray was at 28 percent, Muriel Bowser at 20. You and Jack Evans essentially tied for third place in the poll. Uh, so my question is, since this information has come out, do you sense that things have changed, that the, the numbers are beginning to shift? Well, the number of donors to my campaign has dramatically gone up. How so? The number of, of volunteers and people calling to volu you know, volunteer for my campaign, there's a lot more energy. And I'll be, um, you know, some major groups are, are lining up uh, endorsements for me over the next seven days. And so it is um, the dynamics are changing. We'll see if it's enough. But no matter what, we've got to fight for an honest government. And the whole city has to care about this because the one thing that will undo any government is if you believe you have to pay in order to get a contract or pay to get government land or something like that. And that Jeffrey Thompson, the reason he gave money was to protect his contracts. And that he's not the only one who's bundling money into our government in order to protect their their business and that's the surest way to undo a decent government dc in a great city dc council member tommy wells is our guest ward six he's running for mayor of course and i want to circle back on something you just said you said you're the only one who wasn't subpoenaed in this case uh, last hour we had muriel bowser here she's running second in the campaign right now we confronted her we said hey you took money from this guy she said listen first of all there was no shadow campaign the money that he gave was legal and when i had a chance to vote on his special interest i actually voted against him so by saying she was subpoenaed that in some way uh, uh, dirties her in this uh, that that's not fair is it Tommy Wells well my understanding is is that um, that everyone at the time that there was subpoena everyone but me and you know I think but that so what I mean just because you get subpoenaed doesn't mean that you're you're guilty of something you're absolutely correct but the degree to which she she and everyone else <clears throat> that's running that's bundling money from limited liability corporations that are controlled by one person so they can really get around the finance limit laws, whether it be legal or illegal, is subverting, I believe, the donor finance laws. I think it makes a difference. Ever since Citizen United, you know, I don't believe that a progressive Democrat should be bundling money from corporations because corporations are not people. And we see that when you give money to D.C., you know, certainly to any elected official, you expect something in return. 
And so that's why I'm not taking any corporate donations. We've got to clean this up. All right, a couple items in the news. Number one, uh, David Catania apparently going to file this morning to run as an independent in November. Thoughts? Do you have any thoughts? Well, <clears throat> I know that I'm running, you know, for, for mayor, and I have a vision for the city. I, you know, I don't really have any thoughts about what David Catania does. All right. The other thing is that apparently the, the Board of Elections has said that the issue of marijuana can be put on the referendum. And this we're talking about legalization, not decriminalization, whole different thing. We're talking about legalization of marijuana in the district. Would you be in favor of that or would you be against it? I'm in favor of it because I think, you know, that I'm a, you know, we've got to move forward. But I'm glad we got decriminalization through. I believe that Congress will leave decriminalization alone. And that was something that we had to get done. Now, I don't know if Congress would be, you know, would sit back if we do legalization. But I'm going to support legalization. But I'm really very happy that we got decriminalization done. And that really does kind of move us in the right direction. Uh, Tommy Wells, we had Mike DeBonis on yesterday at the Washington Post, you know, the District of DeBonis blog. He, he really follows this race pretty closely. I'm sure you're familiar with his, uh, his take on the mayoral campaign. We had him on yesterday, and he suggested that, that you're, you're kind of in trouble here because you have vowed not to take corporate money, and you've emphasized it here in this interview that that's been a big part of your campaign, that in these final three weeks before the April Fool's Day primary, you're actually underfunded, and you're not going to be able to take advantage of Mayor Gray's troubles the way Muriel Bowser might. Uh, what's your response to that? Well, <clears throat> I believe that you know it's really in the hands of the voters and the hands of the groups that want good government. And I'm the vehicle for that. And so if the, if the city folks want to rally around that, I don't believe that good government can be bought. Um, I think you have to work for it and you have to vote for it. And that's what I'm putting out there. And that's why I'm the only one doing this is to give the city a chance, really, to get on the other side of, um, of good government and get beyond this um, culture of corruption that we've had throughout our city government. And that's why I'm running. All right. So the mayor says... He's absolutely 100% innocent, not guilty of the things that have been alleged. Do you believe him? Well, you know, the Suleiman Brown, this started with Suleiman Brown. And Suleiman Brown, almost every allegation he made has, been, has come to be true. But do you if believe the mayor when he said he did nothing wrong? I, I think it starts with Suleiman, no, I, I think it starts with Suleiman Brown, that I believe that the mayor knew that he gave him a job that he was not qualified for in return for staying in the race. And I think it all unravels from there like it did. That's where all this started. So did the mayor know that, you know, these are close friends. Vernon Hawkins is a good friend of the mayor's, working, you know, for the shadow campaign. Would, it, it's hard to believe that the mayor did not know. I mean, certainly these are allegations, and he has, you know, Ron Mason has to show what he's got. And and then we'll you know we'll wait from there. But who do I choose between Ron Mason and Vince Gray right now? I have to trust the U.S. Attorney. All right, Tommy Wells. It's uh, so great to have you. Things are going to get hot and heavy in these next three weeks. We have an open invitation to all the candidates, and we appreciate you taking us up on that invitation today. You bet. Thank you.